Hey, 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 everybody, what is going on? Serial of the Drive here, and today we're going to be talking conspiracy theories. Also, we're going to have some Apex Legends going on in the background, but back to conspiracy theories. So, what we're going to be talking about today is a man known as John D. Rockefeller. A lot of you guys have probably heard of him, but for those of you who haven't, he is considered to be the wealthiest American of all time and possibly the richest person to ever exist. At least he's the richest person in modern history. His net worth at its height was worth $408 billion. Literally the richest man in the world could be three times richer and would not even be close to John D. Rockefeller. Think about that. Jeff Bezos could have Amazon worth $4 trillion and he probably would not be as rich as this man once was. So that gives you an idea of sort of the kind of power that he had. This was a Gilded Age. There were a ton of families back then who are just known now. Um, and that's where a lot of these conspiracy theories come from. So to understand the man, we've got to understand where sort of everything came from, okay? So Rockefeller was born to a huge family in upstate New York, and his father was a con man. His father was pretty much, from everything I can find online, a vicious man. He was not one of those people that you'd want to be raised by, and he definitely did not set a good example for his son. But despite all of this, his son actually managed to sort of keep going. He went into businesses and he founded a company known as the Standard Oil Company in 1870. He ran this company until 1890 and then sort of stepped back but was still one of the major shareholders. Standard Oil Company was basically this huge, huge company that went into oil and kerosene. Now, back when he started this company, Rockefeller had no idea what this company would become. That was because cars and things like that were not a big thing. But when the Ford came around, Henry Ford, I think most of you guys know that, but when Ford, Rolls-Royce, a lot of these cars came around and started producing these, well, cars, um oil became worth a lot more. As oil's value went up, the Standard Oil Company's value went up because they had all this oil and at their height they controlled about 90% of the oil in the United States. There were some there was some competition in Europe and everything like that. They were expanding markets, but in the United States they controlled 90% of the oil and that's where the majority of his wealth came from. Uh, this eventually led to the courts declaring it a monopoly, and the Standard Oil Company was split up to become ExxonMobil, Chevron, and 32, 33 other companies that a lot of them still exist today. And when this company, when the, well, actually the craziest thing is when Standard Oil Company was split up, that is when Rockefeller became worth $400 billion. So he was worth $409 billion in 1913. And this is adjusted, by the way. That he was not worth $409 billion in 1913 money, but in 2018 dollars, he was worth $409 billion. Um, at the time, he was worth about 1.5 to 2% of the U.S. economy. If you think about that, that is just a crazy number. He could literally affect the GDP of the United States of America. Of course, you've got to remember we weren't as big back then but still that is a crazy thing to think imagine if someone well there probably are people out there who control whole countries but they're not as big as the u.s anyways so let, let's get into sort of the first of many conspiracies that is aimed at a john d rockefeller so one conspiracy that I've heard mentioned again and again is that Rockefeller is pro-monopolies. I don't know why people call this a conspiracy. It's actually a fact. Like he went to court to argue to keep his companies together and multiple times throughout his life he was accused and actually convicted of running a monopoly. In most of these cases his company was broke up and he, he usually ended up coming out better for it. But he was definitely a proponent of monopolies. I'm pretty sure if you dug deep enough, you could find quotes where even he said that. So moving on though, one of the biggest conspiracies I've heard against him is that Rockefeller was against oil or against alcohol because he was worried That's that really ethanol cool, would take over the automotive industry. It would be used as something in cars. And because of that, ethanol would wipe out the gas industry and Rockefeller would essentially lose a huge amount of wealth. So First of all, Rockefeller's main like complaint against alcohol was that it went against his religion. And one of the other reasons that he sort of 
acted on Prohibition. Rockefeller was one of the main members behind Prohibition, by the way. He was one of the people who sort of brought that to light. He spent a lot of money on these charities, and he spent a lot of money on charities all over the board. One of the charities, one of the causes he was for was Prohibition. Now, a lot of people, again, say that ethanol was going to compete with gas, but here's the facts, okay? So... He was against. He was an extremely religious man, and he was against ethanol or alcohol because he didn't agree with people drinking it. He thought it was immoral and just a bad thing. He also thought that through prohibition he could get better employees. A little known fact about Rockefeller is he was actually friends with Ford, and Ford was another person who was against ethanol. Okay, again, they were against ethanol being drank. They're against alcohol, but they were not against ethanol being used for automotives or anything like that. Ford did consider it at one time Ford's, and I believe Rolls Royces could run on ethanol, but gas was sort of the main thing. That was the main thing that everybody was using. Now, if you actually go back and look at Prohibition and these bills that were sponsored by Rockefeller and Ford and a bunch of other notable people who sort of set the U.S. back in my in my uh, opinion. Um, but if you look at these bills, they say that ethanol can be used for any other purpose other than drinking, which means that ethanol being used in a car was completely legal at the time. It was completely legal for someone to sell ethanol instead of oil so long as that ethanol was going into a vehicle that's actually applied for in the in the in the amendment in prohibition so for those of you that say rockefeller did this all because he was worried about gas taking over or losing control or he was worried about ethanol he was worried about it but only for religious purposes mainly he did say that like it made his employees not work as good but the main reason he was pro prohibition was for religious reasons now another thing that people sort of complain about or Another conspiracy people have about Rockefeller is that he was creating education to create a working force, not to create people who are self-starters, self-motivated, and all that good stuff, okay? So here's a few facts about Rockefeller and sort of education. Rockefeller created a few universities. Obviously, like Rockefeller University, he created that, but also University of Chicago. Back in the day, University of Chicago was a little-known university that had very few members and was extremely religious. Rockefeller at the time donated $80 million, which is a huge amount, to the University of Chicago and made it what it is today. So he essentially started University of Chicago. He started a lot of these colleges, and he also supported a general education board. For his time, he was extremely progressive as far as this is concerned he supported a lot of black schools down in the south and he was also one of the main donators or one of the major donators to yale harvard brown and columbia again he was worth so much at the time that a small donation from him could equal a million huge donations from someone like me or you so that's that's one of the things to keep in mind now one thing he did say is he was into education because he wanted to get people to a working level of intelligence that was his goal right he wanted people who could follow instructions he wanted people who could work on his assembly lines or work actually i don't know if he had assembly lines but he wanted people who could work for him he wanted people smart enough to work for him but he wasn't actually interested in getting people to a level where they could compete with him again he was very pro monopoly so this all sort of fits with his ethos right he's going to want to help get people educated he's going to want to he wants to make the U. US a better place. He was a major philanthropist, but but he was not interested in having any competition. That's one of the main things that you're going to see play out here. Again, it's not really a conspiracy theory. A lot of people say like he took over the education system and tried to stupefy people. No, he was he was trying to make people more intelligent, but only within reason or what he considered to be within reason. He was not looking to create competition for himself. He was more looking to create employees. So that's one of the reasons why he sort of set up the education system the way he was. Um and again, you've got to consider this was a huge deal because he was the main benefactor to so many different universities. So he definitely had an effect on our education system. And a lot of people maybe truthfully would say he's the reason that we're not more geared towards startups and go-getters in our education system and why a lot of people like Bill Gates would drop out. Um, Maybe that's true, maybe it isn't, I don't know, but based on the facts, I can definitely tell you he was not interested in creating sort of world-class people who could run businesses. He was created in creating world-class people who could work for him. So that's sort of a, a big thing there, but 
I, I don't know. I think it makes sense to me, and it sort of fits with Rockefeller as sort of what I've been reading about him. Now, the next one up, okay, is that Rockefeller has been taking control of sort of the medical sciences and working with Big Pharma. Again, this is a conspiracy that's true, but it, it's sort of... A lot of these conspiracies, there's a lot of truth in them, but when you dive down into the reasons and sort of what he did, it's not true at all. So a lot of people think that Rockefeller and sort of his family still, and we'll get into that later, is working, worked with Big Pharma to create sort of all these horrible things in the world. Now, Rockefeller was actually one of the first benefactors to medical science sciences. He's actually known as one of the first great benefactors, but he was more of like a Bill Gates of his day. So what Rockefeller did was he helped to eliminate hookworm and yellow fever in the U.S. He donated tons of money to various medical institutions and founded a lot, a lot, a lot of research that sort of shaped modern medicine today. One of the reasons that people aren't dying in the streets is because of penicillin, but even before that, Rockefeller was one of the people who sort of helped create the system that could educate the people who invented a lot of these drugs that are keeping us alive today. Again, he was an extreme philanthropist later in his life. Up until 1897, he ran the Standard Oil Company, but after that, he was just making donations. And if you think about $409 billion, he could make a billion dollar donation pretty much every day that he lived. And he, well, he'd, he'd actually go broke in 409 days. But you guys get what I mean. He could make billion dollar donations and it wouldn't affect him that much. And when you think about that, that is a huge amount of money. That's the amount of money that probably very few people could match. Bill Gates has done that similar. And you can see what he's done sort of with medicine and how he's pushed it even farther in countries like Africa. And remember, back in the day, the U.S. did not have the cures it has today. So there were a lot of major concerns that could be wiped out with these small donations as far as the medical and sort of sanitary fields go. Rockefeller was a huge proponent behind all this and he really helped to push this forward. Now, that's sort of the end of all the truthful conspiracies that I could find any information about. So let's get into just a few of the real out fringe stuff. So one of the things that everybody sort of accuses Rockefeller of being part of is the New World Order. Now back in 1897 or 1937, that's when Rockefeller died, I don't know if there's too much interest in the New World Order. I think there's a big interest in the Gilded Age and people becoming as rich as possible, but I don't know if that was really a New World Order type thing. Now, one of the things is all these rich people, they all sort of knew each other. Rockefeller did live right next to the Vandervelts, another famous family that's accused of being part of the New World Order, and he did have some inter interactions with the Rothschilds, specifically the Paris Rothschilds. He was in competition with them but again he probably interacted with them in more of a business sense than in a were mortal enemies sense um so that's sort of his connection to the new world order if you look a lot of these families that that rockefeller did talk to were world families that were shaping the world that were creating the banking system and rockefeller did probably play a hand in that he probably did have something to do with that. So back in the 1800s and 1900s, he was a huge factor in sort of shaping the world as it is today. And if there is a new world order actually going on, I could definitely see some of the stuff that he did leading to it. I don't know if he was a part of it or not, but it looks like he definitely did have a, a role to play, if you will, in there. Um, right now, I don't think his family has much to do with the New World Order. So right now, there's about six generations of Rockefellers alive. I think there's soon to be seven. Um, the fourth generation is what controls the family's wealth. They have about $11 billion, which is a lot of money. Do not get me wrong, but $11 billion isn't exactly take over the world money. Now, of course, a lot of that money's hidden. There's stuff like paintings and things that have been accumulated throughout the years that probably are unaccounted for. Um, he's donated a lot. A lot of his family overall has donated billions to charity. Um, and even in the 1930s, there are still donations going on. Philanthropy. Uh, philanthrop philanthropy has been a huge thing throughout his family's history and his family is seeking to sort of continue that name so that's very cool i really do love that fact about them and as far as the new world order goes if they are actually worth 11 billion dollars i don't know how much of an effect they can have on it when you've got these old families who are probably worth a lot lot more um there are trusts created there's ways that his family stays in power it looks like 
from sort of what I've seen, he's done a lot of things right, him and his successors. They've set up trust. They've set up a way so that their family will never lose power. They are in power pretty much for life now, which is a crazy, crazy thing to think about. But it's true like not for life but forever his family's always going to be around they're always going to have the power that they have and there's always going to be these conspiracy theories about them with the new world order because they're such an old family and any of these old families there's definitely hidden money um back in the 1800s a lot of things weren't recorded they could have bought paintings they could have bought well a wide number of things that they're just holding on to in shell companies and stuff like that because over a hundred years it's so easy to just hide your wealth and just remember john d rockefeller lived to be 97 so he himself almost lived a hundred years his legacy has been sort of being worked on since the 18 late 1800s so like 1890s let's say so you know his family's his family's wealth is over 120 years old so obviously there's a lot that's hidden but they're probably not worth the same amount as someone like jeff bezos or bill gates crazy to think about but probably true um and again a lot of these conspiracies they are true right? rockefeller was against prohibition but not because he thought ethanol would take over the alcohol ind- or take over the gas industry it was because he was against it for religious reasons he was in a big fan of monopolies right he was a pro monopoly but again he he was pro monopoly because he ran a monopoly not because he was looking to start some new world order he was just looking to get richer and again the other conspiracy would be that he was uh for big pharma which he was he made huge amounts of donations to them but that's one of the reasons that you see some of the great stuff that you see today anyways guys that's going to be a wrap for this episode. That's going to be a wrap for sort of this overview of the conspiracy theories and the life of John D. Rockefeller. If you guys have any questions, comments, anything like that, if you think I'm wrong, if you think I've missed something, please let me know down below. And again, I know I didn't jump into the New World Order too much, but one of the reasons for that is because the New World Order is this loosely defined thing. And it's like... They say there's all these people shaping the world and creating a new world order, a new society, a new class of society. But I don't think Rockefeller was a part of that. I've got to look into it more to see if it actually is a thing. It was at one time referred to by George W. Bush, but that was a whole different thing than what the conspiracy theories are related to. I know that at least. Um, And I don't think there was this concept around when John D. Rockefeller died. And I think his family is not worth enough nowadays that they could have too much influence on it. $11 billion is a lot of money, but it's not Amazon. It's not Microsoft. It's not Apple money. There's a lot of people that are way richer and that would probably be able to do things a lot more influential. Anyways, thanks for watching. Until next time, peace.